All right, Cease. Have you played, uh, so what team or teams might look like Nebraska and did playing Purdue, since from the Big Ten, did that help? Um, I think Purdue is spot on, Cease, in terms of a team to compare them to. Um, Nebraska is very good. They've got talent at every position. They're big, they're long, they shoot it, they rebound it. They've got great size inside, very similar to the Purdue team that we played in November. So that does give us a little bit of a, a sample size of what it's going to feel like. Um, but we obviously have our hands full because they're super talented, obviously made it to the Big Ten Championship and lost in overtime to Iowa. So that speaks right away to what they're capable of. Coach, what were the emotions going into last night's selection show and then on the other side seeing Texas A&M pop up on that screen? Yeah, well, we thought we had done enough to get in, but you don't know. You know, when you're sitting on the bubble, you just don't know. And so let's just even rewind it further. Like all last week being off spring break, I think – I'm always watching basketball, the men's and the women's tournaments, but I, I watched the conference championships more closely this past week than I have in a long time because, you know, who wins or loses could affect, you know, if we get in or not. And so we felt good going into last night, but we weren't assured of anything. And we, we just were hopefully hoping that our body of work, especially having Indy back in the tournament, spoke for itself in terms of what we were capable of. Um, so nerves, jitters, um, and then to see our name pop up and we didn't have to wait long to see it. It was genuine excitement. I, I haven't felt that excited in a really long time. And I, I told our staff, I said, I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to be sitting on the bubble wondering if we got in or not. But I do want to remember how this felt because when you go to the tournament and you've gone to the tournament, sometimes you can, I don't want to say take for granted, but our excitement was just very genuine last night and it was on a different level than it's ever been before. And so as we continue to go to the tournament every single year, that's what we're here to do. That's what we want to do. I hope we can still remember how last night felt because it was pretty special. I'm really proud of our team. Um, we've been through some things this year in terms of injuries and not having full rosters and figuring things out. And so for them to have this opportunity, this was one of our goals this year to make it to the tournament in year two, which is a big jump from winning nine games last year. Um, I'm, I'm super proud of them. How good did it feel to just, it looked like you played some of your best basketball uh, at the SEC tournament. So how good does it feel knowing that you're coming off of two really strong performances headed into, into the tournament? I think as a coach and as a staff, that's what you want. You want to peak at the right time and you can peak too early. And um, you can you can be peaking at the right time, and I think that's where we are. And again, that's with still having different rotations, just getting our point guard back. But I thought we came out and played really well. We clicked. It, just, it looked like um, everybody was able to sit in the chair they're supposed to sit in with with Indy back, um, and just really happy of, of of how we played and how we're performing right now. Any extra relief uh, getting out of the playing game as well, and not just. You know, <laughs> for getting into round 64, but, you know, hopefully setting yourself up for an easier time in that round 64 game? Yeah, I think if you would have asked me before yesterday, we would have been happy to, to get – we just wanted to get in. We, just let us in. Um, but, yes, of course, like to not be in a play-in game is wonderful. It's one less game you have to play. It sets us, sets us, sets us up to um, be able to just maximize, like, our bodies. And, you know, when you're playing three games in a week, it's doable – Right, but it just gives us I'm not going to say an advantage, but it's one less game we have to play. And I think again, you know, it speaks to the committee taking into consideration the things that they said they would take into consideration: injuries. Do you have people back? You know, looking at the potential of where, where we could be with a full roster, and I think they did that. Other than Albert, do you have any connection with Nebraska? You know, they had, they had the head coach, any, any dealings there over your, over your time? Yeah, I know her from afar. Like, I don't know Amy very well at all, but obviously she played at Nebraska. She's done a really good job since she's been there. I think this is like her eighth or ninth season, um, and she's done a really remarkable job. So I've watched her from afar and have a ton of respect, you know, for her. Um, but I don't know. I, we, I don't know her well. What about similarities when you took your first Georgia team to the NCAA tournament? What, what do you draw on? What do you, what do you need to be worried with your team? First, like you mentioned, first time for Janai. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what, what might you look for? I, I think the conversation, and it's why we try to be as consistent as possible, it's what's right in front of you, and that's Nebraska. It's not what would happen after that. It's not what anybody else is doing, who, who anybody else has to play. 
it is Nebraska. And that's how we approach every game. That's how we approach any tournament that we're in, any game that we're in. It's who's right in front of us. Because if you don't take care of who's in front of you, then you don't get to anything else that you're thinking about or projecting. And so uh, we, we try to speak that language all the time. And that was just a conversation that we had yesterday. And it's also, again, like, you know, put your head down and focus on the job that's in front of you. Don't get this is where you can get caught up reading things in the media and the paper about yourself, seeing yourself on TV like and those are things that we caution against all the time. And and so hopefully that message is deeply rooted um, in who we are and that we can just focus on the task at hand. I know you said one of your goals for year two is obviously to make the tournament. So just how does it feel for you personally to be able to get that done? Uh, I think as a staff, we try to be as realistic as possible in terms of where we are and, and what we're capable of. I think we hit that mark last year, and I, th I think we hit it again this year. So it just speaks that we are tracking appropriately for year two and, and what we want this program to be and moving forward what we want it to look like. Anything other than resting up? Uh, you know, this last week off or so, you feel like y'all have been able to make some headway and just kind of working on yourselves? Yeah, so we obviously gave them the week off with spring break. I think it's important for them to take time off and rest their bodies, get home, see family. Um, and then we came back Thursday night, so we practiced Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We we're off today, and then we'll practice again tomorrow and find out when we're leaving and those things. But it was a great opportunity for us to have a full roster and work on ourselves and um, tweak some things, look at some things offensively and defensively. Kind of similar to Ben's question, what are the, the other pros and cons of having nearly two weeks between uh, competition? I don't, I don't see any cons. We've, you know, fortunately, everywhere that I have been for a long time as an assistant and a head coach, we've always had spring break after the SEC tournament going into the NCAA tournament. So it's really all that we know. And I think it is needed. Our sport is a year-round sport. We play both semesters. We practice all summer. Um, if you throw a foreign tour in there, they're here all summer. Our young ladies need this break. And so the pro is that they are rested. They um, got to get loved on at home if they went home. Some stayed in rehab. Some stayed and worked out. That's their choice. They're, they're responsible, and it is our job as coaches to all year long prepare them for that time off. And they came back with great energy, great legs, um, great mindset. And so there's, in my mind... Um, and it didn't look like we lost a beat. We still came back and played, and our, our practice guys were back for us. And shout out to them for coming back and being here to, to help us out. But we didn't look like, we looked just like we did at the tournament, which is what you hope for. And I think it speaks to again the growth and maturity that this team continues to to learn and have. Just how cool is it for A and M that both teams? Are yeah, going to super excited. You know, um, I learn so much from Buzz every single day. He is. Um, incredible and tremendous and a thought leader and a great a great coach and so very happy for him and um, obviously they're playing Nebraska as well so just just really excited for our programs being on the uh, the advisory committee for the athletic director search I, I know you know you talked about I mean, President Welsh was ultimately gonna make the decision but when y'all you know looked at Trev and I guess kind of his track record as a committee his body of work what what stood out to you guys as a group, uh, you know, that made y'all want to now not nominate him, but you know, urge people to consider him? Yeah. So number one, Dave Dun Dunlap did a tremendous job as the chair of our committee. He kept us on task and organized. It was very well done. Our committee was very diligent and and took our responsibility very seriously. And that responsibility was to put together um, candidates that we could present to General Welsh so he could make a decision and. In looking through that, we wanted someone who, again, um, was very aware and proactive in what college athletics is going to look like in the next 16 months to five years, because it's going to be totally different. I don't think any of us know what that looks like, but we need to be have some thought. We need to be prepared for whatever comes. Um, someone who is engaging with our coaches and our staff and our administration um, and who can come in from and lead us well. And I think that we did that. We gave uh, a group of individuals to General Welsh. And ultimately, when you look at Trev's body of work, it speaks for itself. And so what I can say is that I had some time with him yesterday and his family and, and Angela, his wife, and, and they are tremendous people. I'm super excited about him being our leader for our athletic department and excited for him to, to get to work. 
any extra pressure, like no pressure right off the bat from a new boss, but like, man, this first game given the draw, like, <laughs> like <laughs> no, I think he was very excited that we both teams got in. Um, it, we don't control who we play. You know, um, and so our job is to go out there and, and perform well and to, to try to advance. And if that's Nebraska, it's Nebraska. If it was somebody else, it was going to be somebody else. So we try not to add any flavor, any flavor to that. Yeah. First trip to Travelos for you? Yes. Okay. Obviously, I've been um, to Oregon before, but this will be my first time spending some time in Corvallis for sure. Yeah. All right, thank you all. Thank you guys so much, especially for being here this morning. Thank you. See you soon.